that we're saved. It's a free gift from God. I want you to press into that this morning and believe that you have everything you need to succeed. Just surrender to the grace and say, Lord, not my will be done. Thy will be done. And then you die daily. You surrender. You surrender your will. You surrender your life every day and then you let Jesus resurrect the things that he wants to live in you our God deals with crucifixion and resurrection and that power that same power that raised Jesus from the dead is available to you and I so we don't have to struggle we don't have to strive we don't have to try so hard to be good to be perfect to be holy we just have to surrender and say Lord Holy Spirit, make me whole. Make me holy. Help me to do your will. That's what the Holy Spirit comes along and does. He's like, I'll help you. I'll remind you when you say things you shouldn't. I'll remind you when you do things you shouldn't. I'll, I'll walk beside you and I'll help you to crucify your flesh so that Christ can live in you and be seen in you so I want us to sing that part um, I'll praise the one who let's sing that again 
place and online, Lord, will encounter your love, will experience your presence. They'll feel that drawing of your spirit that says, I'm here, I want you, I love you, I forgive you. There's always, as long as there's breath in your lungs, there's the ability to repent, to change directions, to draw near to the Lord have all your sins washed away so that you can walk unhindered, so that you can live free, so that you can experience what it feels like to have that childlike faith that's not burdened down by the cares of this world or the, the storms of this life, Lord. Jesus is enough to cover all of that. He says he'll, he'll take every worry that you have, every fear that you have, he says, come unto me, all ye that are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Do you want rest this morning? Then you're in the right place. We're going to have an encounter with Jesus this morning. The Lord's going to speak to your heart exactly what you need to hear. Open your heart this morning and let him minister to you. Amen. Amen. Well, welcome to Ignite Church. We're so glad that you're here. We're always coming expecting. We never want to forget to come with an expectation that this could be the day. You never know what God's going to do in this place today. And we welcome you here. Before Pastor Troy comes up, I have a few announcements. We're getting ready to start our marriage ministry uh, our group again. So I want you to mark your calendar. All you married couples, uh, it's going to be on Wednesday night this time here at the church from 7 to 8.30 once a month. And our first one's going to be May 18th. And we're going to start in a book called Marriage on the Rock by Jimmy Evans. And it's going to be a good time of learning and just strengthening our marriages because the marriage is the foundation of the family. And when you have a strong marriage, it, it's just like building your house on a rock, and it gives your family the strongest possible foundation that they can have 
to weather the storms of this life. So we're going to build strong marriages. We're going to have great conversation. It's always fun when you talk about marriage. I have some fun stuff to share always, my own stories. And then women, we're getting ready to start our women's ministry. We'll give you the dates. We're going to do that uh, once a month on Saturday morning from 9 a.m. to uh, 1030 or 11. And it's going to be a lot of fun. We have a women's retreat coming up in July, and we're actually going to do our first women's retreat for Ignite Church. And so we have lots of good things planned. Men's ministry is going to start back up, and we're just going to continue to build our church family, build this house, and stay strong in the times that we're in. Amen. So God bless you, Pastor Troy. Amen. Good morning. How's everybody doing? You know, that's our goal at Ignite Church, just to, to make disciples and to strengthen you and to help you in your walk, to encourage you and, and keep you on the right track. Um, if you want to give, you can text to give. Uh, I believe the number will be up there on the screen. If you'd like to give check or cash, you can grab an envelope in the box from the box right next to the sound booth and then just drop it back in there. Um, if you were here last week, if you were here last week, I told you, how many of you remember, I told you that I would finish what I started teaching on a few weeks ago. Um, I was teaching on Paul when he was teaching in Ephesians. How many of you remember that? And Paul told us not to lie. If you were here last week, I told you I was going to teach on that this week. And I was telling you kind of a funny story. It was like I taught that on a Sunday and it was like Monday or Tuesday. Man, I just lied. <laughs> And lied. And, I, and I, I don't know if I was being tested or, you know, when you bring something to your, to your attention, now you start seeing it all the time. And, man, I, I, I caught myself in a lie. And then I went, and then I didn't just catch myself. How many of you lie and you know you're going to lie? Okay. That's what I did. And, and I told you last week, if I had it to do all over again, I'd lie again. Okay, so I was having to ponder all of this and, and think about it, you know, because I just taught on it. Let me give you that scripture real quick. <clears throat> Ephesians chapter 4, 25 and 26. It says this, and Paul was writing to the church in Ephesus, and he writes, so stop telling lies. Let us tell our neighbors the truth, for we are all parts of the same body. And don't sin by letting anger control you. <clears throat> so I was going to teach on that, but... It got worse because it's not only are you, does Paul tell us not to lie, what else does he tell us not to do? To get mad, to get angry. Honestly, probably the two things all of us do. You all lie. If you think you don't, you just did, okay? You all lie. If, you, if you're sitting there and you could say, I've never gotten mad. I've never gotten angry. I'm looking around in church. Gabrielle might be the only one. <laughs> that, come on, Malachi gets mad, huh? Because <laughs> it's like, if you can honestly say, I never get mad and never get angry. And, and, and I got to kind of cut this short, but I got angry this week. Man, I got angry. I, I don't want to get too sidetracked. But I, it was Wednesday or Thursday, and I found out they tried to pass a law, pass through a bill in California, and they tried to sneak it through. And they got it okayed so far but boy they ended up getting a lot of opposition because people found out at the last minute and like 2,000 people showed up in Sacramento but this bill is basically saying that you can now and I'm not even going to call it abort I think Michelle shared a little bit in prayer not abort a baby but you can actually kill a baby 7 to 14 days after 28 days after the baby has been born and they didn't push it through as an abortion rights bill. It was a parental rights bill. And man, I heard that, and guess what I got? I got angry. Man, I was mad when I heard that. Because automatically, you know, I think of little Lola. I mean, come on, born how, two pounds? A pound and 11 ounces? Come on, if there's a baby that you could say, well, this baby, she's not going to make it. You know, yeah, okay, it's apparent, yeah, this is too much work. It's, it's not. Man, we were laughing last week. Little Lola can beat Malachi <laughs> across the floor in a crawling race, okay? A little baby that most thought, well, she'll probably never even make it. 
man, this is what's going on. And, and so I got angry. Man, I got mad. I didn't sin. I didn't sin. But I'm going to do my best to try to keep you more informed on things that are going on so that, so that you can contact, you can email, you can do. And listen, it, it, some people say, well, that's political. No, it's spiritual. I'm not going to try to pit Republican against Democrat. What I want to do is have the light expose the darkness. Amen. So, so I was, I was thinking about all of this, but I got to tell you, I got to tell you, I kind of lied again. Okay. I kind of lied again because I'm not going to teach any of that this morning. <laughs> Even though I told you last week I was going to teach it, I'm not going to teach it this morning. Okay. I, 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 I will teach it. I almost said, I promise. I will teach it next week. Maybe. Maybe. Okay. I don't want you to show up next week and the Holy Spirit does something else and you're like, you lied again. <laughs> you lied again. I will teach it next week. Maybe. Okay. I will finish that series or whatever we were talking about sooner or later. Okay. But I need to talk about something this morning. I need to talk about something that I said last week. If you were here last week, if you were watching online, I need to talk about something that I said last week, and I need to clarify something that I said. You see, there's times when I might, there's times, and maybe you can relate to this in your workplace or, or at home, or there's times I might say something. I might say something because I know something else. You know, I might say something because, well, I know A, B, and C is true, so, so I can say this. I can say this. But, but, but if you don't know, if you don't know that A, B, and C are true or whatever it might be, I'll say something and, and, and you, might, you, you, might, you might take it wrong. You might misunderstand it. Or you might just not even get it. You might be, you might have, you might be just like, oh, okay, well, yeah, sure, okay. I was trying to think of an illustration that I could give you and the only thing I could think of is sometimes I will call Sam. I'll call Sam if I'm having trouble with my computer or the church computer or something's going on with the computer. And I'll, and I'll talk to Sam and I'll say, hey, I need some help here. And Sam will say something like this. Okay, if you know me, I'm not computer smart. But Sam will say something like this. Okay, turn it on. Turn it on. Go to your browser. Open, open up the, open up the um, app that you need to open up. Um, go to menu, click on settings, go to settings, click on that app, click on whatever app it is. If you're working on the printer, type in your IP address, and then you go to here, and then you go to there, and he's just going on and on and on. And you know what I'm thinking the whole time? <laughs> Honestly, I'm thinking, what's a browser? <laughs> okay? I'm thinking, what's a browser? And I'm still trying to log in because I'm thinking, what's my password? You know, and I'll have to ask him, Sam, what's the password for this? Is it, is it Ignite Church is great? I'm making these up, okay, so nobody tries to break. Ignite Church is great? And he'll be like, no, 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 that's the password for, for, um, for Google. Oh, then it's Troy Perry's great, right? No, that's the password for, for something else. And I'm like, well, okay, so it's what? What is it? It's like, oh, it's, it's Jesus is Lord. I'm like, oh, okay, I can't even get in without help. And, and I'm telling you right now, this is a side note for everyone. I am probably going to end up being one of the most unsecure people on the planet of Earth. Because how many of you, I am so tired of trying to remember passwords. I'm going with one password. It's going to be like Troy Perry, one, two, three, and an exclamation mark. Because if you type it in there, you need a symbol in there. Okay, I'm going to make it so stinking simple that, that I'm, I'm tired of it. But, but a lot of times that'll happen with Sam. I'll call him up now and, and I'll ask him some of those things. But now here's the thing. Sam will tell me something because he already knows something else. Are you following me? He can tell me something and it might just go shh over my head. I might not understand it. I might not get it. But he does because he already knows something else. Hope you're following me on that. So, so last week... Last week I said, if you were here, if you were watching online, last week I said that there are two words. I said there's two words that many times in the scriptures, they're interchangeable. Do you remember that? I said there's two words that in the scriptures are, are interchangeable. They're almost the same. How many of you know what those two words were? You remember? Oh, for those of you that were here last week, I'm disappointed now, okay? 
Those two words I told you last week, there's two words in the scriptures that seem to be interchangeable. And those two words were power and spirit. Power and spirit. Because the scripture says the same power that raised Jesus from the dead is alive in you. The same spirit that raised Jesus from the dead is alive in you. So I told everybody these two words are, are, are many times in scriptures, they're the same. They mean the same thing. I said that last week. And I understood, I understood what I was saying because I understand, here's what I understand, because I understand, I already know the Holy Spirit is not a power. The Holy Spirit is not a force. Holy Spirit is a person. Holy Spirit is a person. He has power and he gives power, but the Holy Spirit is a person person. He's the third person in the Trinity. And when I got home, and, and I think it was Monday morning, I just felt like, man, I made it sound like Holy Spirit's just a power. Holy Spirit's just a force, because I said spirit and power, they're the same thing. But I understood it, but I wanted to make sure that I don't lead somebody else or somebody else misunderstands what I'm saying. Holy Spirit is a person. He's the third person in the Trinity. Now, I am not going to try to explain to teach on the Trinity this morning, okay? Trinity is basically that our God is Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. God in three persons. There's a song that I'm, blessed Trinity, okay? God in three persons. And a lot of people say, but Pastor Troy, Pastor Troy, one plus one plus one is always three. I get that. But did you ever think about this fact? One times one? times one is always one okay come on and and, and I'm not going to go through the argument I'm a I'm a father I'm a son I'm a brother there's water there's steam and there's ice I don't want to go through all of that okay because too many times we try to figure things out intellectually and, and we try to reason everything out man I have heard people say I have heard people say I know what heaven is like and I, I, I might not be rude and I might not say it but I'm thinking you have no idea. No, you don't. No. I read the scriptures. And there are some things in the Bible that I read about heaven. And I think, how could that be? Let me give you this one. 1 Corinthians 2, 9. And then I'm going to jump into what I want to teach. It says this. That is what the scriptures mean when they say, no eye has seen, no ear has heard, and no mind has imagined what God has prepared for those who love him. Can you, I, I read that and I'm thinking, I have no idea what heaven's going to be like. And how many of you have a good imagination? Man, I have a great imagination. And the scripture says, I can't even begin to imagine what it's going to be like. Let me give you some more quick verses real quick because here's what I believe. God said it, and I believe it. Amen? So, so Jesus said in John 10, 30, Jesus says this, the Father and I are one. John 14, 9, Jesus says, anyone who has seen me has seen the Father. One more, Acts chapter 5, verses 3 and 4. Then Peter said to Ananias, why have, you, why have you let Satan fill your heart? You lied to who? You lied to the Holy Spirit. Then in the next verse, he says, he says you weren't lying to us, but to God. So he, he equates the Holy Spirit to God. So, so the Bible is full of teachings on the Trinity, and I'm not going to go down that road, but what I want you to grab hold of this morning is the Holy Spirit is a person. And most of you know that. Most of you know that. Most of you believe that. But here's what I want to get at this morning. Have you really taken hold of it? Have you really taken hold of the fact that the Holy Spirit is a person? He's not just a power. He's not just a force. He's a person. When was the last time, think about this, and we'll get into this a little bit. When was the last time you spoke to the Holy Spirit? When was the, Pastor Troy, I, 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 I speak to Jesus all the time. I know, I know, and I, and I get that. But when was the last time you spoke to the Holy Spirit? Do you ever get up in the morning and just say, Holy Spirit, have your way in me today. Holy Spirit, have your way in me today. Holy Spirit, give me, give me the words to say. You ever get up in the morning and just, Holy Spirit, give me the words to say. Because you know, that's his job. That's what he does. 
That's what he does. Holy Spirit, strengthen me today. Did you know the Bible says that's what he does? Holy Spirit, give me boldness today. Again, that's what the Bible says he does. Do you ever get up and talk to him and just, and just say those things to him? Last week, our, our, our verses were these. Romans 8, 11 says this. The Spirit of God who raised Jesus from the dead lives in who? We talked about this last week. He lives in you. He lives in me. Lives in you. And just as God raised Christ Jesus from the dead, he will give life to your mortal bodies by this same spirit living within you. The other verse last week, Ephesians 1.19, this is Amplified Version, it says this. And so that you will begin to know what the immeasurable and unlimited sur un and, and surpassing greatness of his active spiritual power is in, in us, that's you and me, in us who believe these are in accordance with the working of his mighty strength. His mighty strength. We talked about that last week. But do you really believe that this morning? You know, I walked away last Sunday and I thought, yeah, those are great verses for Easter. The same power that raised Jesus from the dead is in me. It's in you. What a great verse for Easter. But think about it for a minute. Do you really believe it? Do you really believe that? Do you really believe? Come on, are you grabbing hold of what that, let, let me read it. I'm going to read Romans 8, 11, but I'm going to read it from verse 1 to 14. Because I read it, I reread it this week. Man, that is such a powerful verse. But everything it's saying in that context kind of alludes to that, strengthens that point. And I need you, I need you to get this this morning. So I'm going to read you quite a few verses, 14 verses. It's a lot of reading, I know. I'm going to catch up on your reading if you haven't been reading your Bible enough, okay? But in, in, these, in these verses, I want you to pay attention to how many times the Spirit is mentioned in these verses. Are you ready? I'm going to do some reading. Here we go. Romans chapter 8, verse 1. So now there is no condemnation for those who belong to Christ Jesus. And because you belong to him, the power, and because you belong to him, the power of the life-giving spirit has freed you from the power of sin that leads to death. So it's the power of the spirit that has freed you. Verse 3, the law of Moses was unable to save us because of the weakness of our sinful nature. So God did what the law could not do. He sent his own son in a body like the body we sinners have. I love the way he says that. He sent his own son in the body like the body we sinners have. And in that body, God declared an end to sin's control over us by giving his son as a sacrifice for our sins. He did this so that the just requirement of the law would be fully satisfied for us who are no longer, who no longer follow our sinful nature, but instead follow the spirit. Those who are dominated by the sinful nature think about sinful things. But those who are controlled by the Holy Spirit think about things that, are, that please the spirit. So let your sinful nature control, so letting your sinful nature control your mind leads to death. But letting the spirit control your mind leads to life and peace. For the sinful nature is always hostile to God. It never did obey God's law and it never will. That's why those who are still under the control of their sinful nature can never please God. But you are not controlled by your sinful nature. You are controlled by the spirit. If you have the spirit of God living in you, and remember that those who do not have the spirit of Christ living in them do not belong to him at all. And Christ lives within you. So even, even though your body will die because of sin, the spirit gives you life because you have been made right with God. Verse 11. The spirit of God who raised Jesus from the dead lives in you. And just as God raised Christ Jesus from the dead, he will give life to your mortal bodies by this same spirit living within you. Therefore, dear brothers and sisters, you have no obligation to do what your sinful nature urges you to do. For if you live by its dictates, you will die. But if through the power of the Spirit you put to death the deeds of your sinful nature, you will live. For all who are led by the Spirit of God are children of God. Did you see how many times Spirit was mentioned in there? Thirteen times. Thirteen times in those short verses. He's trying to get a point through to us. You need to be filled with the power of the Holy Spirit. 
This same power that raised Jesus from the dead is in you. It's available to you. Why would we want to walk around powerless when this power has been, has been given to us? Now, again, if these verses are real, if these verses are true, I read them and I think, if they're true, then you know what? Something needs to change. If these verses are true, something needs to change. Listen to me. The Holy Spirit can get a body up out of the grave that has been dead for three days, but he can't help me with my problems. He can't help you with your problems. Have you ever thought of it that way? Come on, the Holy Spirit could get a body that has been dead for three days out of the grave, but he can't help me with my problems. He can't help me with my, he, he can't do anything. Listen, he can get a dead body out of the grave that's been there for three days, but my forgiveness, my forgiveness is too big for him. There's no power in me to forgive somebody. He can get a dead body out of the grave, but my grave, but my addiction, my addiction should be no problem at all, right? He can get a dead body out of the grave. My anger should be no problem. My habits should be no problem. My sins should be no problem. My weakness should be no problem. Are you following me on all this? The Holy Spirit can get a dead body out of the grave. Listen, a generational curse should be no problem at all. Holy Spirit can get a dead body out of the grade, grave. Your fill in the blank, whatever it is, your problem, your situation should be no problem at all. Wouldn't you agree with me on that? That same power is in you. That same power is in me. And it's in me, guess what? For me. It's in me, for me. Man, I hear so many believers, and it's okay, but, but I hear so many believers say, man, I, just, I, need, the, I need the Holy Spirit. I need the, the Holy Spirit to give me a prophetic word for so-and-so. I need the Holy Spirit to give me a word for so-and-so. And that's okay, and that's okay. But I hear people say, I need the Holy Spirit to give me discernment for so-and-so. But have you ever asked the Holy Spirit for a word for you? Have you ever asked the Holy Spirit for discernment for your problems? I mean, we pray, Holy Spirit, Holy, Holy Spirit, move in my community. Have you ever prayed that? I think sometimes when we pray, I think, I don't, this is just me, because I think God has a sense of humor. I think sometimes we might pray, Holy Spirit, move in my community. And I think sometimes the Holy Spirit's like, you know, I'm having a tough time just getting, I'm having a tough time just moving in you to move in your community. And you're praying for, hey, Holy Spirit, move in me. Holy Spirit, move in me. Let me give you another verse. 2 Peter 1.3 says this. His divine power, this same power, okay, this same power has given us everything we need for a godly life. Say everything. Do you realize? You have everything you need to live a godly life. Everything. Everything you need to live a godly life. And I hear so many Christians and people just whine, I can't do it, I can't do it. And yet the scripture tells us right here, you've got everything you need. You have everything you need. 2 Peter 1, 5, 8, it, it, it goes on and it says this. For this very reason, he says, because you've got this power in you, because you have this power in you, make every effort to add to your faith goodness and to goodness knowledge. Now li listen to these things. Knowledge and to knowledge self-control and to self-control perseverance. Not, you're not going to quit endurance. And to perseverance godliness and to godliness mutual affection and to mutual affection love. For if you possess these qualities in increasing measure, they will keep you from being ineffective and unproductive. How many of you want to be ineffective? You want to be unproductive? I don't. I know, and this scripture is telling you, you've got that power in you. That same divine power, that power is in you. Now, now here's what I want you to begin to think about, okay? Because I think too many times we blame the Holy Spirit for our lack of effort. We blame God, and it's our lack of effort. Uh, man, I, I, asked God, I asked God to take away this temptation, and he didn't do it. I asked, I asked the Holy Spirit for strength. 
and I didn't get any. I, I asked the Holy Spirit for boldness, but I didn't get it. But, but here's my question to you. Did you make any effort at all? Did you make any effort at all? Did you see the beginning of that scripture? For this reason, what? Make every effort. Make every, we blame the Holy Spirit, we blame God, but really, are you putting forth any effort? Are you putting forth any effort? Listen, listen, I, I try to go. <laughs> I don't want to lie up here, okay? I try to go to the gym three days, three days a week, okay? But I'm not, I would not say that, man, I'm really putting forth effort to go to, if I put forth effort to go to the gym three days a week, guess what? I'm probably going to the gym three days a week. But I'm just trying to go to the gym. Do you ever, uh, this, uh, I was going to say church, but that doesn't work for everybody. And you'd say, well, you have to be here, Pastor Troy. But how many of you try to be to work on time? Do you just try? Or do you make every effort to be at work on time? Come on, most of us, you make every effort to be to work on time. You don't just try to be. A, my wife used to laugh. I used to be like late to everything. I was late. Man, I was late to everything except work. I was never late, never late to work. You want to know why? Because I was making every effort to be there on time. You following me? Because I knew I had to, because I'd be fired or maybe whatever else, written up, whatever else. But, but do you see the difference? Oh, yeah, I could try to be to work, or I could make every effort to be there. You see, I could try to overcome sin, or I could make every effort to overcome sin. I could try to forgive somebody, or I could make every effort to forgive somebody. I, I, I could try to not get mad. I could try to not lie, or I could make every effort not to do those things. And that's my question this morning. Are you making any effort at all? Let, let me go through those things because the, the scripture talked about them. Uh, uh, here's what we say. Holy Spirit, give me knowledge. And he talked about that in the verses I just read. Knowledge and goodness and faith. It, we, we pray, Holy Spirit, give me knowledge. Give me knowledge. How many of you ever prayed? Holy Spirit, give me knowledge. But do you put forth any effort? Do you put forth any effort? Or do you just pray, holy, like, and it's so funny to me sometimes, and we can use it on this example because it's so simple. Holy Spirit, give me knowledge. Give me knowledge of the word of God. And then what do you think is going to happen? Seriously, what do you think is going to happen? All of a sudden, bang, I'm going to just get hit and filled with knowledge, right? Is that real? I mean, I guess it could happen, but is that really what's going to happen? What's going to, what needs to really happen? You have to do what? You have to put forth some effort, and if you put forth the effort into getting into your word, reading your word, guess what the Holy Spirit will do? Holy Spirit will bring revelation to you. Holy Spirit will bring understanding to you. Holy Spirit will give you the ability to retain what you're reading. But it took some what? It took some effort on your part. You can't just simply say, Holy Spirit, oh, fill me with knowledge of your word. It, it doesn't, it takes effort. Holy Spirit, Oh, please, please, please. Holy Spirit, I'm struggling in this area. Holy Spirit, please give me self-control. Now, that's great to pray, right? But do you honestly think that's, that's all there is to it? Oh, just Holy Spirit, give me self-control. And I'll never be tempted again. I'll never have. No. It's going to take some. Don't go to those places. Don't go to those websites. Don't go to the. Don't talk to those people. Don't argue with those same people every day, right? Holy Spirit, give me self-control. Well, it's going to take some effort on your part. Holy Spirit, give me perseverance. Give me perseverance. Man, do you just quit the minute something gets hard? And you, oh, Holy Spirit, help me not to quit. Well, come on, put some effort into it. Put some effort in. Holy Spirit, give me boldness. Give me boldness. Do you even make an effort to speak? Do you even make an effort to talk or to share the word of God with somebody? If you just sit around and say, Holy Spirit, give me boldness. And you're waiting for him to like literally open up your mouth so that you'll share the word of God. It doesn't work that way. Amen. You following me? 
It takes some effort on your part, on my part. Holy Spirit, oh, and, and I prayed this one. I'm sorry, but I have, and I haven't put forth the effort. Holy Spirit, help me to love people. Holy Spirit, help me to, do you really think that all of a sudden this emotion of love is just going to flood over me? And I'm just going to love everybody. I'm going to love the guy that cut me off. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to love the guy that flipped me off after I cut him off, okay? I'm going to love the person that's been. Come on. Does, would you agree? It takes some effort. It ta man, I'm, I'm, she's probably going to watch this later. It takes some effort to love my wife sometimes, okay? Married couples agree with me on that, okay? We're having a marriage class coming up soon, okay? Come on, you have to put forth the effort. It takes effort to love my kids. They make me mad sometimes. If we just think, Holy Spirit, give me love for those that mistreat, those that abuse me, those. Come on. You're going to have to put forth some effort. You're going to have to put some, forth some effort. Listen, listen, I could go on and on with these. I'm going I'm to cut it short, okay? But, but 2 Peter 5.11, it says this. This is not the same verse, but it says this. Therefore, my brothers and sisters... Make every effort to confirm your calling and election. For if you do these things, you will never stumble. A second time, a second time, make every effort. Make every effort. Guys, we have to stop blaming God. We have to stop blaming the Holy Spirit. He's here. He is here and he's in you to empower you. But listen to me. You're going to have to make an effort. You're going to have to make an effort. Yes, he's here to empower you. Yes, we talk to him, we pray for him. But listen, you have to make an effort. 1 Peter 1.3, we looked at it a moment ago. He gives us everything we need for godly life. We unlimited. Do you realize? I'm trying to figure out how I could. Unlimited power in you. That's what that Romans, Romans 8.11 says. This same power, this same incredible, mighty, immeasurable power that was in Christ, that raised Christ Jesus from the dead is in you. Unlimited power. Now, I was thinking about that. How many of you pray some crazy things, right? Do, do, uh, do you have, <laughs> do, does anybody here have any limitations at all? Come on. You think it's a trick question. It kind of is, okay. Do you have I have limitations. I have limitations. I could pray. I could pray all day. I could pray all week. I could fast all month. And I could pray, Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit, enable me, strengthen me to be a wide receiver for the Chargers. I know I just, I just ruined somebody. Okay, Steelers, Dolphins, Packers, whoever you want, okay? Now, is that going to happen? Why? Because I'm limited, right? Levi, Levi could pray. He, Levi could practice basketball six hours a day. He could practice every day. He could, get, he could get personal training from Michael Jordan, personal instruction from Michael Jordan himself. But he's still not going to be able to beat me, okay? No, he's still not going to. He's still not going to be in the NBA, because he's got limitations. He's almost tall enough. But, but do you follow me what I'm saying? Yes, they're, they're, we, we all have limitations. I get that. But I want to show you real quickly. And you can just jot these down because I'm not even going to turn to them. I want to show you. Here's what the Holy Spirit can do and wants to do and scripturally is able to do in you and I. I'm going to run through these really quick. Holy Spirit helps us to pray. Holy Spirit will help you to pray. I'm just going to give you the scripture. You can look it up later if you want to write it down right now. Zechariah 12.10. Holy Spirit helps us to pray. How many of you are ever having problems in your prayer life? How many of you have ever been, been struggling to be consistent in your prayer life? Guess what the Holy Spirit's here to do? He's here to help you. He's here to help you in your prayer life. Yes, you're going to have to put forth some effort, but he's here to help you in your prayer life. Holy Spirit, the, the Holy Spirit teaches us the Word of God. John 14, 26, write that down. I want to know the Bible better. I want to know the Bible. The Holy Spirit is here for that. That's what He's here for. Again, you will have to put forth the effort, but He's already in you 
And that's what he's here for, to help you understand the Bible. Holy Spirit makes us holy. Galatians 5, 16. Holy Spirit helps us live right. Holy Spirit convicts me of sin. When I've sinned, when I'm thinking of sin, he convicts me. He does not condemn me. He does not condemn me. But he convicts me, so he helps me to live right. Holy Spirit helps us to worship. John, John 4, 24. We worship what? In spirit and in truth. Holy Spirit reminds me. I love this one. Holy Spirit reminds me that I'm a child of God. I'm a son of, you're, you're, you're a daughter, or a son or a daughter of the most high God. Listen, the devil wants to tell me I blew, I've blown it. I'm a sinner. I messed up. I'll never make it. Holy Spirit is constantly reminding me, no, Troy, you are a son of the most high God. But I just blew it. I just did this. I know. But the Holy Spirit comes along and says, no, you're a son of the most high God. Holy Spirit works miracles through us. Galatians 3, 5. Every miracle that has ever been done through man's hands, the Holy Spirit has been involved. Holy Spirit gives us faith. Second, Second Corinthians 4, 13. When I don't have faith, when I don't have enough faith, when I have little faith, the Holy Spirit is there. Holy Spirit gives us boldness. Second Timothy 1, 7. Holy Spirit will give you boldness and he'll give you the words to say when you need them. When you need them. Again, you got to make that effort. Holy Spirit comforts us when we need comforting. Listen, up here for a moment. I could go on and on and on, okay? I could go on and on and on. How do we not need the Holy Spirit? You ever, how, do we, how do churches, how do believers, how do people teach, oh, you don't need to be filled with the Holy Spirit. That's weird. That's all. How, when, I, when I just go through that list of what the Holy Spirit is here to help you do, how do we not need the Holy Spirit in us? It just, it just kind of blows my mind. Let me go back to this last verse, Romans 8, 11, one more time. The Spirit of God who raised Jesus from the dead lives in you. And just as God raised Christ Jesus from the dead, he will give life to your mortal bodies by the same Spirit living in you. Again, twice, twice. He's trying to get the point across to us. The Holy Spirit lives in you. Do you believe that this morning? Maybe, maybe are, are you not sure? Or maybe you don't completely understand that? Let me just give you two thoughts real quick. Two thoughts on this verse and on that, on that kind of a doctrine. Number one, a lot of believers, a lot of people believe that you receive the Holy Spirit when you ask Jesus into your life. A lot of people believe that you receive the Holy Spirit when you give your life to Jesus when you're born again. Now, there are some believers, there's some churches, some people that teach that it's a separate filling. That you get saved and later on you, you can receive the Holy Spirit. It, that, the, the, the two are separate. That one comes after the other. Now, now follow me on this. It's kind of like, to me at least, it's kind of like the rapture. Okay, in the end times, the Bible talks about the rapture. There's a lot of Christians, a lot of believers that, that believe that we, the church will be raptured, what they call pre-trib, before the tribulation, okay? The Bible talks about the tribulation. This is all in the Bible, seven years. A lot of believers believe that we'll be raptured before the tribulation. They call it pre-trib. There's a lot that believe that we'll be raptured in the middle of the tribulation. Three and a half years of peace, three and a half years of craziness. A lot of believers believe we'll be raptured right in the middle, a lot of believers believe that, not a lot, a few believers believe that we'll be raptured at the end of the tribulation. And they all kind of have scriptures that they go to, but, but here's my point. Guess what? They all believe in the rapture. <laughs> they all believe that the church will be raptured. And, and, and it's the same way. Whether you believe you're filled with the Holy Spirit when you get born again, when you're first saved, or whether you think it's a separate event, listen, we all know, and everybody believes, that you need to be filled with the Holy Spirit. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to try to simplify it. I'm going to try to explain it this way because I believe, this is what I believe. I believe you're filled with the Holy Spirit when you get born again. I believe you receive the Holy Spirit when you, ask, when you give your life to Jesus when you're born again. That's what I believe. And I'm, I want to explain it to you this way. And then I'm going to start wrapping this up, okay? When you're born, 
naturally, okay, when you're born naturally, you have a father and a mother. Everybody does. Unless, unless your father died during that nine months that your mom was carrying you, okay, everybody that's born has a father and a mother. All of us. You have a father and a mother. And, and, and I know there's... Gosh, I don't know what there is now, invertio and all of those things, all of those things. But guess what? All of those things still require an egg and a seed. They still require, guess what? A man and a woman. I don't care how they go about it, okay? They still, in some capacity, require a man and a woman. It's still beyond me why we can't figure out what a woman is and why we can't figure out what a man is, okay? It is pretty simple. Just follow the science, okay? I'm going to get off in there, so I won't. But, but, but listen, listen. I got to get back on track. Back on track, Troy. Everybody that's born naturally, again, unless it's that name, you have a father and a mother. You have a father and a mother. Most of you here this morning, most of you that are here this morning, you have a mother and a father. My dad passed away um, last year, and some of you, your parents have passed away. And that, that's okay. Just kind of follow along with me on this, okay? Just because you have a parent doesn't mean that you're in relationship with that parent. You following me? A lot of people have a mom and dad, but they're not in relationship with that mother and father. They're not in relationship with that parent. That, the, that, that mom, that dad, they're not active in your life. You don't spend time together. You don't talk with them. They're not involved in your life. They, they, they don't have a part in your life. And, and maybe, maybe you're here this morning and you, have a, you, you do have a relationship with them, but it's just, it's not very deep. It's not, you talk eh, once in a while. You talk once in a while. And you spend some time together. Every once in a while you get together. And you love them. Absolutely, you love them. But they're not active or they're not involved in your life. Um, there's people in my life that I've had an encounter with, but I don't have a relationship with them. Are you following me? I, I've had an encounter with people, but I don't have a relationship. It's the same with the Holy Spirit. You received him when you got saved, but do you have a relationship with him? That's what I want to drive home this morning. Do you have a relationship with you, with him? Is he active in your life? Is he involved in your life? Do you talk to him? Do you spend time with him? Maybe you have a relationship with the Holy Spirit that's not very deep. So you're like, yeah, I talk to him once in a while. I spend time with him once in a while. I let him get involved in my life once in a while, <laughs> whenever I want to, Right? Maybe you've had an encounter with the Holy Spirit, but you don't have a relationship with the Holy Spirit. <clears throat> I'm going to close right now. You can come on up and play keyboard if you want. <clears throat> I want to close right now, but listen. Here's what I want you to get. I'm, I'm not going to pray for you to receive the Holy Spirit. Because I, because I believe the Holy Spirit is already in you. I believe that if you've given your life to Jesus, if you're born again, the Holy Spirit is in you. If you have never given your life to Jesus, if you're watching online or you're here this morning, you've never given your life to Jesus, you need to do that. And we'll be here after service. If you're watching online, talk to somebody, contact us. You need to give your life to Jesus. You need to be born again. But I believe most of you that are here this morning. You've given your life to Jesus. You're born again. I believe the Holy Spirit is in you. That same spirit that raised Jesus from the grave with incredibly unmeasurable, mighty power is in you. But here's my question to you this morning. Will you make every effort to have a relationship with the Holy Spirit? Would you make an agreement with me? Would you vow this morning to make every effort to have a relationship with the Holy Spirit. Well, Pastor Troy, what's that look like? What's that look like? 
I can give you some homework this morning, okay? I can give you some homework for this week, for this month, this year, the rest of your life, okay? I can give you some homework. Holy Spirit's in you. Would you agree with me this morning? The scriptures teach that. Would you agree with me this morning that that is incredible, mighty power that's in you? If that same power could raise a dead body out of the grave, how many of you would agree with me? He can help you with your problem. He can help you with your situation. He can help you with your addiction. He can help you with, with your unforgiveness. He can help you with anger. He can help you in your finances. He can. How many of you would agree with me? If that same power could raise a dead body out of the grave, he could certainly help you with whatever you might be going through. So this morning, here's your homework. Here's your homework. I want you to begin to practice. I want you to begin to move in a relationship with the Holy Spirit. What's that look like? I really want to challenge you to try this. Just, just do this. Just do it. You get up in the morning. When you get up tomorrow morning, just get up in the morning. This is, uh, man, I do it in different ways, but some, sometimes I get up. I get up just about every morning, and it's usually my first words are, good morning, Jesus. Good morning, Holy Spirit. Let's just use my first words. It's because it, it helps me set up the rest of my day, man. But I want to encourage you. I want to challenge you, man. Get up in the morning and just begin to say, good morning, Holy Spirit. And just begin to talk to him. What do you want to do through me today? Holy Spirit, what do you want to do for me today? And begin to talk to him as if he was right there. Holy Spirit, I got this meeting. I got this business meeting today. Holy Spirit, would you give me wisdom? Would you give me wisdom in my business meeting today? Holy Spirit, I've got an interview today. Holy Spirit, would you give me favor? Would you give me favor in that interview? Holy Spirit, I'm going to see, I'm, I'm going to see so-and-so today. And man, you know I struggle with them. Holy Spirit, would you just give me the patience? Would you give me the words to say? Would you give me a heart to love them? Would you help me to forgive them? Holy Spirit, man, would you give me boldness today? Man, would you get up in the morning and just begin to talk to him as if he was right there? And just begin to say those things. Holy Spirit, I got this going on today. Would you be with me? Would you give me the boldness, the strength, whatever it might be? And then throughout the day, throughout the day, maybe, Holy Spirit, strengthen me. I'm being tempted to go here. I'm being tempted to go in this direction. And again, make every effort on your part, but just talk to him, Holy Spirit. Because when you make, when you make, make it a relationship and you feel like he's right there with you, you won't go places. You won't do things. You won't say things. Um, I have time, so I'll share this really quick, and then I'll be done. I don't. I, I didn't plan on saying this. I think I probably told you the story before, but we went and this was like years and years ago. Okay, we were barely saved. I'm gonna. I'm gonna bail out with that one. Okay, this is my disclaimer. So we went and saw a movie, and I don't even remember the name of the movie. Okay, I thought it was good. It seemed to have a good plot. It seemed every, everything was good, and we really liked it. So we invited um, my wife's brother, our pastor to go watch a movie with us. And, and it's kind of why I understand today why none of you invite me to the movies, okay? So, so we invited him to come to the movies and, and the movie started. And within the first 10 minutes of that movie, I wanna say it was Al Pacino or somebody, within the first 10 minutes, he said, and I'm just gonna abbreviate, you'll know what I mean, GD, okay, you know what that means gosh darn it okay but not gosh darn it okay that's philip rivers version gosh darn it okay he said gd gosh six seven times and we're sitting there with our pastor who got up and left <laughs> and we looked at each other like good grief did we come in five minutes late <laughs> when we saw it did we not see it did we not hear it the first time or was our awareness heightened because all of a sudden our pastor is sitting there with us? Well, how much more when we come to the, the knowledge or the awareness, we come to the conclusion that, you know what? I just read to you a whole bunch of scriptures that tell you that the Holy Spirit is where? In you. How much will our awareness of sin, our awareness of our weaknesses and different things, when we're going into different places, saying different things, doing different things, how much more will our awareness of the Holy Spirit with us be if we're in a relationship with Him? 
See, that's where I want to challenge you because that's where I believe it can really help you. Throughout the day, man, Holy Spirit, strengthen me. I'm being tempted to do this. I'm being tempted to go there. I'm being tempted to wring somebody's neck right now. I'm not. Okay, but during your day, you're like, Holy Spirit, man, I just want to slap them. Holy Spirit, will you help me? Holy Spirit, help me to forgive somebody for what they just did. Help me to love that person that's so difficult to love. Guys, when we begin to do that, when you begin to enter into a relationship with the Holy Spirit, and it's, and it's day by day by day, hour by hour, but can I just tell you this? It's going to change your life. And you're going to see this same incredible power that raised Jesus from the grave taking care of your problems, taking care of your situations, overcoming your addictions, your habits, your unforgiveness, your, your lack of love. That same power that raised Jesus from the dead is in you and wants to do all of those things for you and I. Will you make every effort to do that? Guys, I just want to encourage you. Try it. I'm asking you. Just try it. What, what's, what's it going to hurt? What's it going to hurt? Somebody might think you're crazy. They already do, right? Look at He's talking to himself. He's talking to himself. He's, he's, he's talking to himself. Damn, I, listen, just put some earbuds in and everybody will just think you're on the phone, okay? Uh, come on. Will you try that? Will you make an effort to make a relationship with the Holy Spirit a priority in your life? Will you, would you make that effort with me this morning? I'm telling you, I am telling you, it will change your life. You will live an empowered, a spirit-empowered life. And you'll begin to see strongholds broken. Breakthrough. You'll begin to see breakthrough in your life. I want to pray for you. Father, I thank you for your word this morning. I thank you for incredible power that is in each and every one of us. The same power that raised Jesus from the dead is in us, God. So this morning, I pray that we would begin to make every effort, every effort to establish and maintain a relationship with the Holy Spirit. That we'd welcome Him in. We'd welcome Him into our day, our workplace, our lives. And we'd, we'd, we'd bring to remembrance that He's right there with us. And Father, I pray for each and every one of us here that we are going to begin to see that same power that raised Jesus from the dead working in our problems, in our situations, in the things that we go through in our lives. Oh, Father, I pray this morning, each and every one here, those that are watching, that Holy Spirit becomes so real to them that it's literally life-changing. And then we begin to operate in that same power. That same power is in us this morning. Holy Spirit, help us to make every effort to establish and maintain a relationship with you. I pray this in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Amen. Listen, you are dismissed. Well, altars will be open if you want prayer want encouragement, going through something, you just need prayer for any, any number of things, healing, finances, whatever it might be. Will you do that this week, though? Come on. Will you do that? Make a conscious effort to speak to the Holy Spirit, to invite Him in, to ask Him for that power, to ask Him to do the things that the Word of God says that He is here to do for you. Would you do that this morning? Make every effort. Make every effort. I pray that that Word gets stuck in your head all week that you wake up and think am I making every effort am I making every effort I put man I'm telling you it'll change your life amen hey God bless you guys have an incredible day if you want prayer altars are open we'd love to pray for you amen